Tom Rucker heading this officiating crew. He'll toss the ball here, retiring at the end of this season. One of the great ones. Dixon with the lob right off the start to Baxter. What a beginning for the Terrapins. And we talk about experienced players. There are two of those seniors right there that have been part of this incredible run Maryland's made in the last four years. Interesting matchups here. Point guard on point guard, shooting guard on shooting guard. Mouton will have the Butler assignment today. Selvi doesn't like it that far away. Kicks it back out. Brown with five on the shot clock. Three-pointer, UConn. I don't know why Blake was falling off that far, that far away from the basket, particularly with the clock winding down. And here we see going inside with Baxter, trying to get Okafor in trouble early. That steps. They yeah, challenged the freshman. Okafor forced him into a travel here right off the tip. Dixon. With the lob to Lonnie. Well, Talik Brown had no chance whatsoever, particularly with a big man going in behind him. Remember the other day, Roland Roberts from Southern Illinois, 11 for 16, 24 points, and really got started early against, um, against Connecticut down inside. Wilcox sweeps after the Butler miss. Dixon off balance. He respected Okafor. Do you notice how he altered the shot? He did. Even he changed it on the way up. Yep, even though it wasn't blocked, it was altered. So his reputation precedes him. Mouton kept it alive. Saves it on the baseline. Here comes Dixon hustling. And a foul on Butler. Actually, Juan Dixon should have been down there in a position to make that layup. He didn't think that the ball was going to eventually be recovered by Mouton. So he kind of goofed off on the other half of half court. Could have been in for a layup. Dixon kicks it back out. Baxter, jumper. Mouton back up with it. Wilcox on the follow, right over the rim. Now, now, Wilcox is a man that Connecticut, if they're going to stay in this game, will have to keep off the boards. As I said, he did not start in the first game, in which Connecticut surprisingly out-rebounded Maryland by 10. But he plays above everybody when he's not blocked out. They out-rebounded him, but Maryland beat him by 12. That was in Washington in December. Tipped around by Butler and saved by Mouton. Maryland ball. Maryland really going to the defensive glass here. And there you can see again, we've had so many ball in the cylinder plays, Jim. I think that that one was in Very the cylinder. Close. Yeah. They have not been called, and it's been consistent no call by the referees. Robertson swats it out of bounds. Great timing by Robertson on that play. Good curl move by Dixon, got too wide open, but you can see Robertson's athleticism to be able to go up with Dixon, who's a good leaper himself. Zone out of bounds situation. And they stay in the 2-3 zone. Dixon will try to find himself a hole, and there it is. He found it, three-point shot connects. Good cross-court pass. Robertson has to stop that passing lane. Much too easy for Maryland. 7-3 Terrapins. And Dixon with the near steal. Jim, I pointed this out about Dixon throughout the course of this NCAA tournament. That was Juan Dixon, the steal leader all-time at Maryland. He gets more steals off the ball with his great ability to anticipate the pass. He averages only two fouls a game, and yet is the leading steal man, never having fouled out of a game and yet being one of the best defensive players in the country. That's quite an accomplishment. Says something about his anticipation. Absolutely. And his uh, basketball savvy. Savviness on the court. There he was again, almost picking one off. Robertson three. And Wilcox tips it. Butler in the right spot for UConn. That time, Wilcox's ability to go up high probably hurt him a little bit, Jim, because he really shouldn't have been able to get his hand on that ball. Boy, the curl moves are, are very easy for Maryland to get nice shots coming off. Mouton had a shot, passed up on it. Bounce pass, Baxter rolls Second out. Jump. Yes, tipped in by Baxter. That's the unusual thing about Lonnie Baxter, his ability on the second jump to be up there around the rim, carrying a lot of weight, upper body, 
And just as Roberts did for Southern Illinois, those big guys with wide bodies able to do a lot of damage against Connecticut. Beautiful pass. pass. to Dixon to Baxter, taken away by Butler. Three on two, UConn to Leek Brown comes in. Oh, boy! And that is goaltending. Wilcox, so quick off his feet. Probably an overpass by Dixon on the last play inside. Baxter was anticipating the shot and was getting himself ready to go up for the rebound. Teams have had success picking up Blake full court. Another steal by the Huskies. Robertson, numbers for UConn. Can't get control of it in time. Brown, too strong, tipped out Butler. Robertson has to take the open three. Good. This is the game that Connecticut and Jim Calhoun would like to play. Up and down the court, taking away some of that interior power of Maryland, making their big guys run the court often and early. There again, another cool move where there's jump shots available. Wilcox gets past Selby, and he'll head to the line. Selby with the hack. Jim, one of the things that Jim Calhoun did very well in the Southern Illinois game is use Justin Brown and Mike Hayes. Between the two of them, they played 24 minutes in that game. I think we'll see more of that today, trying to wear down Baxter, knowing that uh, Gary Williams has hold of Taj Holden to bring in, and Randall if he needs to. Wilcox, a very poor free throw shooter early on this year, but he shot extremely well here during the tournament. Got out of the state of North Carolina, and all those ACC schools headed up to Gary Williams' way at Maryland. Robertson's hit a three, Brown's hit a three for UConn. Game is tied at 10. 1-2-1-1, one, 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 full court press. Over the top of that press to safety. Well, Selby and Okafor are not really the best, the ball handlers against the press. And I, I'm sure that's the reason that Gary Williams employed it. Okafor. Pick and roll. Selby with the tip in. And we see right away that Selby going to the glass. Nobody's put a body on him at all. Baxter and Wilcox thinking they can just out jump the Connecticut players. There's that curl move again. And Maryland are getting a lot of good plays off of that. Guy's not taking advantage. Baxter gives it up, Mouton. Rattles in for the tie at 12. Very important shot there for Maryland. Mouton, who played extremely well against Florida State in the ACC tournament, has not been shooting well since. Oh, back door, Robertson was open. Just couldn't find the handle. Back here at the Carrier Dome, the East Regional Final. Jim Nance, Billy Packer, and Bonnie Bernstein. Great intensity early in this matchup for the final spot at the final four. Gordon in giving up some more power on that perimeter shooting ability. Hit three of six threes in that first game against Maryland. Blake shut off by Brown underneath. And count the basket. Dixon. Uh, that was just an education lesson by Dixon against the freshman who anticipated he was going to come out over the top. Now, one of the things Dixon probably does as well as anybody that's as big a scorer as he is, he really moves well on the baseline without the ball. Gordon will have to really be aware of it. Pretty good size matchup here. Mouton on Butler, but Butler has been outstanding with turnaround jump shots, and Jim, he really believes he can put this team on his back as he did against North Carolina State in that brilliant performance. He wanted that shot right there after misfiring on his first two jumpers. Dixon banks it home, answers right back. Yes, Butler had said yesterday that I set the Final Four as a goal for my team and myself, and I want to put the team on my back and lead them to the Final Four in the championship. Well, we have seen uh, Kansas in the Final Four, 88, Danny Ferry, I mean, uh, Danny Manning taking his club and doing just that. We've seen individuals win national championships that way. Selby outside, not the shot they wanted. Up ahead, Wilcox was open, just couldn't have find the handle. And he looks back at Blake and says, it's my fault. What he was doing is trying to find his bearings there. But as we always know, you got to make the catch before you can make the shot. Here's Mike Hayes coming in for Connecticut, one of the big bodies off the bench for UConn. And he has had productive minutes in the NCAA tournament. Well, it doesn't what? show up necessarily on the stat sheet, Billy, but exactly. he has uh, 
been very aggressive in his play. And this is what you're wanting to get out of him. You're wanting to get some fouls. You're wanting to get some rebounds. You're wanting to make Maryland have to work inside and set some screens for shooters like Gordon. Trying to get it inside. Hayes double team. Blake with the theft. But Maryland's big men are really getting down the court extremely well today. Another curl move. Dixon. That shot was over Ben Gordon, who's come in for the first time for UConn. He's their sixth man, but their second leading scorer, freshman from Mount Vernon, New York. Good hands by Butler. He was ready to go baseline. And Mouton stole it right away off the dribble. Connecticut tie up. Ball. Yep, Huskies with the arrow. Smart play by Mouton, though, not to get rid of it. It's under the other team's basket. If you do and you make a mistake, they get an easy two. How about this? Brown and Hayes in the game at the same time early. They take Selby out and also out is Okafor. So Brown and Hayes, not big production expected out of them offensively. Inside for UConn and Gordon shot rattles out. He was fouled, however. Fouled by Blake. Tournament leading scores, Billy. Take a look at it. Well, we have uh, one more, one more game that some have played other than others. Jawan Dixon, of course, uh, has another game to play today. He's at 77, and with the same number of games played, he was in the lead. But Aaron McGee, who played an outstanding game yesterday, and the way that Calvin Sampson substituted and had so much confidence in his bench, and then he brings Aaron back into the ball game. He hits that big three. That's a deep team, an aggressive team, and certainly worthy of being a national champion now that they've worked their way to the final four. Ben Gordon hits two free throws and the game is tied for the fourth time. 16 all. Taj Holden in the game for the Terrapins. Good job by Hayes holding his ground in there. Superb substitute turnaround jumper. Not this time. Mouton is hacked on the way up. Mouton showing a lot of effort here early Billy. Well. You remember Mouton, Jim, in the NCAA tournament, as I said, did not shoot well, but against Wisconsin, he started to pick up his activity as a rebounder, and although only credited with four rebounds in that particular game, he became aggressive, and it's really changed him around. He's playing big defense, getting up on the boards, and that shot will eventually come back. Hayes fouled him from UConn. And Dixon, after a brief rest, is ready to check back in. He's uh, probably off his regular season scoring average more than any other player at Maryland. He was at 11-5 regular season, down at 7-3 during the NCAA tournament. Going right over the top of the press so far is Connecticut. Drew Nicholas now defending on Butler. Butler will want to take him down inside and power him. Nicholas is quick. But Butler's a lot stronger. Nick was very versatile, excellent shooter, but giving up a lot of size in that matchup. Butler's just being very patient here. Quite a crossover dribble by Gordon. Brown outside, jumper, banks it home. That was a huge basket right there. You're not counting on Brown, who had the injury that kept him out in midseason. The young man from Australia basket, a big shot there. Basket counts, Billy, but underneath there was a second foul called on Mike Hayes here early in the game. Maryland and UConn all tied up, and perhaps one of the most unsung players for the Terps, senior Byron Mouton. Now, he hasn't been averaging his typical double figures in scoring because his assignment for each game in the tournament has been to guard the top scorer on each team. Dwayne Archibald for Siena, Kirk Penny for Wisconsin, helped hold Tayshawn Prince to 17 after he exploded for 41 in the second round. How he defends Karan Butler today, guys, could be a big factor. Ryan Randall, Bonnie, comes right in for Maryland and slams it home. Little pick and roll action, giving no respect for Randall whatsoever because they're so aware of Dixon and it. Oh, oh, a steal from behind. Yeah, they're going to call Blake instead for the reach. And that's his second. Two on Blake. That Eight would, minutes, 45 seconds into the game. Blake will be the first to admit that he played a very poor game the other day, particularly in some of his decision making down the wire against Kentucky. But he has had an outstanding season, as we know, led the ACC and battled all year long with T.J. Ford as the 
number one assist man in all the country. I think a one assist, Jim, separated those two fellows coming into the whole season. The whole season, yep. Who have the ball in their hands most of the time. A outstanding freshman player did a great job for Texas. So Blake goes out of the lineup for Maryland with the two. Butler over Mouton, the matchup that Bonnie spoke of. And Selby, there's ball out to Robertson. Dixon going right down on the ground, realizing Selby does not have the best of hands. How can UConn take advantage with Blake on the bench? And Selby work a little bit on Randall. Now Jim, the key thing you'd want to do is obviously pressure the guards and make Dixon have to handle the ball a lot more than he'd like to. Robertson on the drive. He loves to shoot on the run. Jim, two things that Robertson showed us both ends of the floor. He leaped over Dixon for the block. Remember when Dixon had the nice wide open layup? And that time, his leap put him over on the offensive end as well. Robertson doing a much better job staying with Dixon down on that baseline. Mouton with the three. Not the shot they want. And Okafer skies above everyone for the board. To the corner. Butler, he'll come in. Give it up, Selby. Yes. Great job by Butler. He recognized where the defense was. And there's Selby hustling. Gary Williams, I'm sure, is going to say, guys, we've got to go back inside against this lineup. Merrill's gotten away from their game plan. Dixon tries to get it inside, lucky to get it back, and the soft oh. roll for two more. Such a soft touch. You know, Dixon's one of the few guys in college basketball that has ability to have the range three-point shot, can take it to the basket, and then has that medium-range game as well. That is a very difficult shot for a guard. Gordon on the drive. What will they call here? A block foul. It's going to be on Randall, a foul that Maryland can afford. Gary Williams just screaming out there, telling him to get defensive position. Both teams going to that bench deep now. You're talking about Dixon and all that range inside and outside with the shooting. He was the leading rebounder for Maryland in the game against Kentucky on Friday night with seven boards. Sneaky. Very much so. Lonnie Baxter back in along with Chris Wilcox. Two starters return for Holden and Randall. And Scott Hazelton seeing his first action for UConn. And Jim, if you'd have said that someday we'd see Juan Dixon doing that, when I first saw him as a redshirt freshman at Maryland, I was wondering if he'd ever be strong enough to even play in a league like the ACC. But uh, he has exceeded all expectations as a recruit beyond anybody's wildest imagination. Talik Brown back in the lineup after a brief break for the Husky point guard. Baxter back in L.O. Prefer. Using that body, just as I said, Roberts did from Southern Illinois. Okafer, a great, great shot blocker, 137 on the year, but those wide bodies are going right to his chest and then releasing. No hedge moves on Brown because they're going to let him take the jump shot. Wilcox over the back. Not a wise foul there because Selby that far away from the basket is not an offensive threat. His first team foul number four. And these two conferences obviously have played against each other this year. The ACC getting the better of the Big East this time. They've had some great battles back in the days when they used to have the ACC Big East Challenge. But the Big East this year had the best record against non-conference foes of any conference in the, in the United States. That was a foul on Okafer after the shot by Robertson. Jimmy Calhoun, 24 and 7 in the NCAA tournament. The head coach at Connecticut. They had only won four in the school history before he arrived 16 years ago. Wilcox tipped out by Nicholas. Selby ball. Got a, Selby got a little piece of the hand. Wilcox still looking at the official. Didn't get the call. That's the reason for the air ball. I'm wondering if Brown is going to go ahead and try to take Nicholas off the dribble one time just to see how well he can do at that point guard defensively. Butler on the bench right now for UConn. Their leading scorer. Hazelton, a decorated high school player, but here's the play, Jim. See how he'll do off the dribble against Nichols. Five on the shot clock, step back three. Brown! Oh, oh, oh. Two 
three so far today. The one thing on the scouting report you'd least expect him to do. Of course, his greatest three gave them the Big East Championship, that 34-footer against Pittsburgh. Wilcox, great spin. Up high with that one. And you can see, Jim, he just elevates above any defender that plays against him. It's just that he doesn't do it enough if you're a Maryland fan. Push Inside, off. Inside, and Okafer has it jarred loose. UConn ball. Timeout on the floor. What is kind of interesting, Talik Brown, you look at those stats, and they are kind of unusual. Brown was 8 for 29 from 3, 27% coming into this game. He's hit two big threes. And the other thing that's interesting is that the front court scoring favors Connecticut so far. Maryland in the zone for the first time, 1-2-2. Two, two. Now, they showed this against Kentucky and did a good job with them. That was a bad technique on that shot. But inside, Butler with the putback. Battling hard. Six points for Butler. Against the zone defense that time. That was almost a lob pass as opposed to a shot. It almost looked like it. So Leek Brown got a little greedy with that one. He's been hot early. What a save. Beautiful pass. Into Wilcox. And Okafer is going to be called for his second foul. And the only reason that that was a foul, Jim, is because he probably was trying to block a shot of a man who can elevate higher than anybody in college basketball. What a now play watch right this. there, Billy, by See, Dixon. He just never anticipated that Wilcox could be that high. And look at the play by Dixon and the presence of mind to get rid of it. Now watch right here. Okafor times it, and he can't believe there's another level that Wilcox goes to. Normally, that ball would be blocked very easily by Okafor. We'll probably see him not again until the second half. Justin Brown takes his position. You know, Jim, with Oklahoma advancing, Oklahoma has beaten both of these teams. They've beaten Maryland much more convincing on their home court. Arizona beat Maryland. Connecticut beat Arizona in that great overtime game that we had. And North Carolina State is a team that beat Maryland. Connecticut beat them as well. So the only balancing there is that Maryland's beaten Connecticut. <laughs> it's kind of interesting in the matchups they've had against other teams around the country that were outstanding. Well, Oklahoma going to Atlanta and with some real quality wins and knowing on the other side of the bracket in the semifinal, they will have beaten whichever team emerges if they are to get to the championship. Follow up Selvey out to Blake, who's back on the floor with two fouls. What a pass. Dixon and Maryland takes the one point lead at 30 29. Boy, Gordon got the shot that he wanted on the inside. We really see some attacking of the basket by Johnny Selvey against his zone. He's finding holes and just going up there after. There's the 1 2 2 zone again. Brown gets in the paint, kicks it back out. Gordon, good shooter. Three pointer swish. That was a mistake by Dixon. Even in the zone, they cannot afford to collapse with a guy like Gordon or Robertson standing out at the three-point line. Broadway Ben Gordon puts UConn in front, 32-30. On the blocks, Baxter. Dixon keeps it alive, but Brown is having a real good first half. These are valuable minutes. A big rebound and an earlier basket by Justin Brown out of Australia. And again, Dixon is going to have to be aware of the side that Gordon's on because that's the number one shooter. Selby wants to challenge Wilcox. And a reach in. That was Butler coming from behind, but it may go for Brown. And that's the seventh team foul. That'll send Lonnie Baxter to the line for a one and one. Maryland had all kinds of problems, Jim. Back in the start of the year, they were shooting 53% in the month of November from the foul line. Now they're a team in the NCAA that's hitting 83%. You talk about a difference in what you can do. There's six for seven so far today. But you start talking about some of the teams we've seen in the tournament that had failings from the foul line, and that's why they're home. Short, short with that one. So now, now, Butler out of the game. Where will the points well, they have come a, from for, for UConn? Jim, they're surrounding this zone. Brown needs to be out at the point because he's the least guy that you'd expect to shoot it. And Brown, Mouton, no foul. Have big numbers here. Bounce pass, Wilcox. Maryland in front, 33-32. That's what Wilcox can do so well. He runs the court and can elevate around that basket in a non-blockable situation. And here you see Mouton out at the top of the key, and I think this is a better move for Connecticut. Brown at the top, and on the wings have your two outstanding shooters, Robertson and Gordon. 
Malik Brown, Selby with the offensive board, and he traveled first, no basket. Johnny Selby just trying to gather himself inside. He's doing a great job on the offensive glass. Here's that pass. Remember the last time they had that breakaway, and Wilcox didn't watch it into his hands. He didn't make that mistake that time. Stayed right with it. How about the reaction, Mouton, with that assist? Dixon. Brown with the board. Pretty good defense by Brown. Chested Dixon. Dixon looking around. Those eyes are always moving, looking to see where is a passing lane. What makes him such a great defender. And a foul on Wilcox for the Syracuse coach. In fact, Jim Calhoun commenting it was a thrill, and he said, and I mean it, to win on Jim Beheim's court. He's been one of my greatest supporters ever since I came in the league. There you see the respect that Connecticut has for Robertson's ability to leap in traffic, throwing a lob pass over the zone to a six foot two inch guard who is able to deliver. Young man who uh, had thoughts about leaving Connecticut, Jim, Just a year ago. Year, yep. Yeah. Thinking he wasn't ever going to fit in and get the playing time and use the skills necessary. Had the patience to wait and now has become a very, very productive member. Recruited right off the championship team came in after the 99 title team and the free throws but the Huskies back in front by one largest lead in the game has been only four by Maryland early Dixon Brown influenced that shot Baxter with the position and he's heading back to the line Jim, this dome, you talked about the Jim Beheim court. This dome, as you can remember, has uh, been involved with some regional finals. We had the uh, Florida, Oklahoma State regional final here. Florida eventually Two working their way to the championship. Back in 97, North Carolina beat uh, Louisville and then lost to Arizona in the final four. And back in 83, one of the big upsets in the tournament history was here when Georgia beat North Carolina. Justin Brown with the left hand. Selby again on the offensive glass. They can't stop him. That Georgia team went to Albuquerque and joined Louisville, Houston, and NC State. No one expected that Georgia well, team to be there. But you know, here's one for you. The first team to win in the Carrier Dome outside of Syracuse. <laughs> Maryland. 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 Yeah, that's right. Came up here for the old Carrier Classic, of which Syracuse and Jim Beheim have not lost many. But they won both games. And they're 3-0 and in here before they got up here for this tournament. Selby with one more. And Jim, you know, thinking of that Georgia NC State, I'll never forget back there in Albuquerque, on one side of the bracket, you had the incredible Houston and Louisville. The uh, game the, for the you, championship. Yeah, right. Then you also. had on the other side of the bracket, two guys, let's get them out of the way, Jimmy Bayheim in Georgia. And uh, and what happened a few nights later? Traveling, it's going back to UConn. Two Terrapins tangled up with the ball. Gary Williams starting to work the officials a little bit. That was right in front of the. You don't like to make a call that's controversial when the coach has a better view of it than you do as the official. Oh, and the pressure by Holden forces the steal. Nicholas pulls up, jumper. On the arm, on the arm. And there is that block that we talk about so often that if you can get by with it, you can stop any jump shooter in the country. And that's getting him right on the tip of the elbow. Talik Brown did so, his yep. first. Very difficult to make any kind of jump shots. If a guy can get, and he doesn't have to hit you hard, just get the tip of the elbow. Drew Nicholas Jr. out of Hempstead, New York. Very similar frame to Juan Dixon. Little taller. Little taller. Now, now watch this right here. Yep. Just a little touch on that. Right there it is. The tip of the elbow. Take away any kind of jump shot. I don't care who it is. I think Nicholas next year with Dixon off to graduation. Nicholas will be a big scorer next year for Maryland. You can I would see agree. it coming. Robertson in the lane and a reach in on Maryland. It'll be a one and one. And the three final four teams already in.
Last in Oklahoma in 88, played the championship against <laughs> right there in Kansas. <laughs> they sure did. Now, how about Mike Davis in Indiana? What a story for well, is, Coach Davis. It is a great story. I think uh, Coverdale's injury is going to really be important in that one, Jim. And when you think about 93, that was Kansas going to the Final Four as the only non number one seed that particular year. Down in New Orleans. Juan Dixon has picked up a second here, Billy. And Maryland trying to become the only repeat team from last year's final forecast with Duke and Arizona and Michigan State all being eliminated here on this 2002 road to the final four. Again you see Jim Calhoun 243 to go in the half Brown picks up another foul but Okafor is not having to be out there on the floor to pick those fouls and put Jim Calhoun in serious trouble in the second half. He's sitting here with a one point lead and using up those fouls by a sub. And that's the 10th team foul double bonus the rest of the half and not only with Okafor sitting but trying to survive the last 2.43 of the half with their leader Butler on the bench with two. Well that's what you're trying to do with your bench. You'd love them to be productive but they are if they can just give you minutes and not hurt you. And that's what Brown has been able to do so far. Baxter gives us our 12th lead change in the first half. Maryland really comfortable in that 2-3 but penetration has worked against them. Tough team to handle up with these good wing shooters that Connecticut has on the floor in Gordon and Robertson right now. Brown back outside to Gordon. Ten on the shot clock Robertson penetrates on that zone. Back out high Gordon. He traveled. Good patience by the zone that time for Merrill instead of reaching out as they did on the last occasion. Everybody held their ground defensively with their feet. I'm surprised Connecticut is not picking up Nicholas full court trying to put pressure on that ball when Blake's out of the game. Nice fake. Blake between two defenders and he's going to the line to try to open up a four point lead. A Baxter in the game earlier this year 24 points. 10 rebounds, beautiful fake, and there he uses his body well. We're talking about a guy that's been the number one field goal percentage shooter for Maryland, a top rebounder. Second team all ACC this year. He was a first teamer in his sophomore year. They charged that foul not to Justin Brown, but to Tony Robertson, his second. He's going to make the observation that Dixon stays on the floor with the two fouls because, as you pointed out, he never fouls out anyway so well, and they're in his zone as well too Jim yep. so he doesn't have that tight man to man responsibility all alone is Brown but they don't see him Selby bank shot oh. very tough shot UConn has gone four minutes without a field goal with Butler on the bench well Jim Calhoun just trying to save time here he wants to see this clock this minute 36 go by as quickly as possible I think they should be picking up Nicholas and really guarding him tough with that dribble Mouton caught back out Baxter. Ten on the shot clock. Nicholas resets at midcourt. Gordon is not contesting his dribble enough. It's a travel and call on Nicholas. And there's what I'm talking about. Even without the contesting, Nicholas, who likes to play with Dixon better without the ball than with it, could have problems with tougher defense on him. UConn has missed its last five shots. They'll take a lot of time here, you would think, with a minute and eight seconds to go. Not a bad idea, Jim. You're down just four, and just to stay that close with your two key guys on the bench is not all bad. Well, quick shot instead by Gordon, the freshman, and saved out of bounds by Robertson off the leg of Baxter. Quick thinking by Tony Robertson. <laughs> well, six two going up against a six foot eight, six nine guy. Look at. Look at how high Robertson goes up. Terrific job on his part. Not much Baxter could do. Calvin McCall in for the first time for Maryland and the steal by Mouton and McCall is the trailer. Was Hold he out on. of bounds? He stepped out near midcourt. One more to go. McCall out there making sure that Dixon in this last 50 seconds does not pick up foul number three. So Blake and Dixon both on the bench right now. Selby inside Baxter rejects if you're Maryland you want to get the last shot and here we see no pressure by Gordon timeout Maryland.
Mike and Dixon in the game, obviously, you, you don't want them to be on the defensive end of the floor, so they'll hold it for the last shot right here. Gordon on Blake, Brown on Dixon. Set up their full firepower here for the last shot of the half. If you're Connecticut, think of drawing a charge on Dixon if he tries to take it to the basket. Under 10 seconds to go in the half. Blake coming off a screen from Holden. If you're Connecticut, you don't want to foul. Holden up high. Oh! Point but shot. Jim, we've seen him with that range in practice. For two years. Every single time we watch him practice, he'll fool with that shot, and he's got great range. So we now start the second half. Blake goes right by Brown and gets touched out early. Matter of fact, that was probably a pretty good foul because nobody was paying attention down low. Particularly not Okafor, who has really got his mindset on where Baxter is. Normally, he's playing a one-man zone down around that baseline. Second foul on Talik Brown. All the starters have returned for each side. A game that's had 13 ties and 12 lead changes. But Maryland, with a fast close to the first half, leads by seven. Wilcox and Okafor with a good tip. Very nice rebound by Okafor. Reached right over Baxter. Yeah, from the right hand, the left hand to get the rebound and a reach in. Mouton. Mouton collecting his first. That was a pretty calculated uh, opportunity for the, for the steal, though. Look at the front court points. Advantage 31-13 Maryland. Jim, something else jumps out at me. Connecticut holds its opponents to the Big East best 37% on the year. Maryland shooting 55, almost 56%. Maryland staying in that zone, figuring it worked very effectively, but that was with Butler on the bench. Butler Big banks difference. home a three. The 1-2-2 one, two, two zone really shut down Connecticut, as it did Kentucky the other day. But again, as I said, Butler was sitting on that bench while that zone was so effective in the first half. And that three breaks a six-and-a-half-minute field goal drought. Oh, there's the third foul on Okafor. Mm, with the body. Baxter to the line for two. He is really getting an education, Jim, on more experienced, more powerful upper body centers. He is a guy that likes to stay away from the man he's guarding and then go straight up for the blocks. And what uh, Baxter is doing is, is the same thing that happened to Okafor in the last ball game. He's using that upper body to put it on Okafor and then releasing the shot. So Okafor is going to have to sit down again. Mike Hayes will take his place. Yes, Maryland and Gary Williams learned a, uh, an awful lot watching Roland Roberts of Southern Illinois operate against Okafor on Friday night here. Well, he is just a freshman, and he is a freshman that is a great academic student, and now he will become a basketball student. And there's a pressure by Maryland. Selby, not a good ball handler, gets by with it. Robertson breaks it right up the middle. Robertson not afraid, as we saw early in the first half, to take the ball to hoop because he can explode. He's their leading scorer with 11. Baxter going inside. They're wanting to get that inside game just as they did against Kentucky. Started early, early in the second half. Great Selby block. Selby with the block. Mouton tip. Wilcox once. And cleared away by Butler. And here come the Huskies. Missed opportunities that time by Maryland. Good Ron steal. Dixon comes over. He saw Blake closing in on him. And Dixon finished it off with the steal. That was touched by the Huskies. Maryland ball. Mouton wanted the ball down to the right. And he is right. Dixon should have passed it to the better ball handler. He missed that one. Butler still appealing. He said he was fouled at the other end. Might have been, but Dixon again with that anticipation anticipated that Butler would try the reverse dribble, and they caught him. Baxter with Hayes defending, and again he'll go to the line. Lonnie Baxter taking control of this game. Now Brown's going to go in. Hayes will come down. Jim Calhoun trying to find somebody that can stop last year's West Regional MVP, Lonnie Baxter. Third foul on Mike Hayes, and he'll go out. Justin Brown comes in. Jim, people who are watching Baxter play, you know, they're kind of amazed that he can pile up these statistics of points and rebounds so consistently every single game but he started off as a freshman breaking Gary Williams record having having a 10 for 10 game Gary as a player at Maryland that held the record at 8 for 8 so this guy has been an efficient player 
since day one for the Maryland Terrapins. Led him in field goal percentage three straight years, rebounds three straight years, leading him tonight. Butler with another three, trying to keep the Huskies' hopes going here in the second half with two threes. Butler really extends that defense. Blake is going to have to understand where Butler is because he can stand beyond that three-point line and patiently wait. Dixon with a floater. Again, double figures. I'm for really 50 second straight game. I'm really surprised that Connecticut is allowing that curl move to be so effective. There's no hedging whatsoever. Boy, that was some telling graphic there with Baxter and Okafor. Brown having an outside game here today. He really is, as we said, shooting under 28% from three and now showing he's got a nice looking jump shot. Got it down to four. Pump fake. Working on Justin Brown and gets it to go. And you can see what Connecticut is trying to do, though. They're trying to push the ball up the court quick, see if they can wear Baxter down a little bit by having to run the court. Justin Brown with the spin move in the left hand, traveling. Looked like a pretty good move to well, me. I didn't see it. And a good idea, you know, one of the things you want to do against a guy that's having such a big offensive game is to force him to play some defense. If he can rest on that other end of the floor, and you can see Baxter's had to run awful hard. Jim Calhoun just going one guy after another against him. And Baxter calling for the ball. He thinks he can take Hayes. Brings Hayes back in. Hayes again with three fouls. Dixon jumper back of the rim. Selby secures. Wide open shot. Dixon's not going to miss many of those. Butler baseline drive. Baxter stood his ground, but they're going to call the block foul on Baxter. Didn't get there in time, and that goes to show you why Butler is so hard to handle. So now Karan Butler will head to the line for the first time today, driven to continue that legacy at the three position, number three. That small forward position, the likes of Danielle Marshall, Ray Allen, Richard Hamilton, just the fourth UConn player ever to be. Big East player of the year. Marshall was once. Allen was named so. And Hamilton twice. Actually shared it this year. Brandon Knight of Pittsburgh. Look at Hayes. Foul on Wilcox. And Baxter just off balance that time. Should have had that rebound on the missed foul shot. For Wilcox, that's three. Foul trouble of Fort Connecticut. They had against NC State and really what won the game for them. They were 21 of 22 from the line, which is unusual for them. But you've got to make them in a tight game like this. And after Butler missed two, Hayes contributes two more misfires. Butler had made at one stretch 19 in a row during the tournament. You mentioned Ray Allen and, and Butler. Ray Allen still holds the record with 36 points. Butler two off in that uh, NC State game. Double team down inside. Walking. Maryland with a six point lead over Connecticut. And that makes the guy next to me pretty happy. Uh, one of our new members of the NFL today, but more important, Maryland class of 84, Boomer Esiason. You've watched enough games to break this one down. How are they looking? Well, these guys are looking great. They really are. You know, they had such a great year last year. They're Focused on getting back to the Final Four. Wilcox, Baxter, especially playing a great game today. So I'm happy. I'm a happy alum. Now, when you were in college, Albert King was there. Buck Williams was there. Len Bias was in his early years. How do those teams compare? This team is clearly the best team ever Maryland's had, I think. And certainly last year they showed it. And hopefully they'll carry it on again this year. Yeah, Boomer, looking forward to seeing you during football season. Okay, thanks. Jim? All right, welcome, Boomer, to... Got a short memory of history. Yeah, yeah. how about that? I'm not going to put this in the same league as those Lenny Elmore, Robbins, and Tom McMillan. With the jumper, you had a couple of uh, Maryland student athletes talking there uh, quarterback right. and the gymnast. 53 we'll let, 49 Terrapins. We'll, we'll let Boomer be solid on football and keep him away from basketball history. How's that? Juan Dixon with the three, and Butler sweeps it away. All UConn underneath. You can see the difference with Butler on the floor, Jim, and as you pointed out so well. With him sitting for such a long period of time, Connecticut was really out of sync in that first half. Just didn't have an offensive flow. And Blake has to understand where he is. Robertson. And that attempted save by Hayes. He's on the line. Maryland ball. Good block out down on the end line by Blake. 
realizing he couldn't get the ball, but making sure that Hayes couldn't make the recovery. This Maryland team, though, Billy, 29 wins. That's the most in school history, trying to become a repeat Final Four participant. Last year, the first ever Final Four school history. Oh, Baxter on the blocks. Good play by Selby. And Hayes stood his ground. Resisted the attempt to try to block the shot. Nice strong dribble by Brown. They stay in this 2-3, this 1-2-2 two, two zone. Maryland playing more zone than they probably had uh, all year long. Butler over Holden. There's the medium range jump shot. We've seen the three, we've seen the drive to the basket, and we've seen the medium range. Here, Maryland and UConn each seeking a second ever trip to the Final Four, but a lot of tradition with the three entrants already, including Oklahoma, which was in the very first Final Four. Well, what's interesting, Indiana, obviously, and Oklahoma have been to the Final Four before, but not by these coaches. Roy Williams going for his third trip to the Final Four as a coach from Kansas. Oklahoma was in that first one back in 39. Traveling call against Maryland. Kind of a delayed call, but I think on the money. Holden looked to pass, saw the lane fill, and, and uh, wasn't able to distribute the ball. Interesting lineup right now for Jim Calhoun. He's done a real nice job bringing his team back. He's got Butler and Gordon on the wings. Maryland goes back to man to man. Okafer still on the bench. Butler calling for it in the paint. He traveled. Good idea, though, by Butler. He had them up in the air. He just needed one extra step. You can see right now, Jim Calhoun is basically going big, Jim. He's playing the game with one true guard. That's Talik Brown. And he's got on the wings. Oh, yeah. there's a cheap foul inside on Holden. Big turnovers by Maryland without even getting a shot off. You don't want to come down the floor in a tight game like this. Holden's second. That was the solid screen down inside for Baxter to get the rub off. Holden, who hit the big shot right at the halftime buzzer to make the lead seven, but UConn can tie it with a two, take the lead with a three. Gordon, he loves the shot for the lead. Dixon broke early. Perfect pass. Did he travel? Yes, he skidded to a stop under the basket. There we have three straight possessions by Maryland, never getting off a shot. Two walks and a foul. Dixon was wide open. That pass needed to be higher in the air. And no question, he did drag those feet. Jim Calhoun has to like what he's seeing right now. This team, as I pointed out, Pretty good at second half comebacks. Butler for the lead. Huskies in front, 54-53. Mouton didn't challenge the jump shot. Butler said he wants to put this team on his back and carry him to the final four. And he is doing that in this half. He is putting this team on his back. Baxter on the blocks. Butler came over to help out. And Hayes is going to be called for his fourth. This is really good coaching strategy by Connecticut right now. They are doubling down on the pass. Now, Baxter's going to have to realize that in the first half, primarily, he was defended from behind, but they weren't doubling down, and he had plenty of room to operate. Now, with the double downs, he's going to have to pass as soon as he touches that ball. Effective move defensively by Jim Calhoun. And Baxter fails to tie it with that one. Hayes will go out with his fourth. Justin Brown in, and Okafor remains on the bench. Now he's got three, Jim, and Jim Calhoun will probably wait to the eight-minute mark before he brings him back in, as long as his team can stay on top or close. Baxter, 12 free throw attempts today. Eight of 12 at the line. Getting all of the Husky big men in foul trouble. But Jim Calhoun has 10 fouls to waste off of that bench, so that's a good position to be in. We're with our 14th tie of the game, and Butler that time it slides off the rim and then off the hands of Baxter. UConn ball. UConn has Maryland out of sync right now. It's a pretty easy rebound. Baxter lets it get away. A lot of turnovers right here for Maryland, almost unforced as well. Yeah. Butler likes his spot here. Floater in the lane. And he'll head to the line. Jim, there it is. That's on Blake, Billy. That's his third. Butler has that ability that you have to respect his jump shot. 
He's got the floater. He can finish extremely well. This co-Big East Player of the Year has been truly outstanding down the stretch. Nicholas coming in for Maryland. He had 17 20 point games this year, six double doubles. He's the fourth leading scorer in the Big East. He was the MVP of the Big East tournament. So this stretch drive is nothing new for him. 56 54, Connecticut, 12 25 remaining. Now let's see it, how this strategy works with Brown in the game. See if the double downs. Here it comes. Selby right over after him. Oh, and that one just rolls off the rim and Baxter returns to the line. Maryland without a field goal for over four minutes. But anytime Baxter wants it inside, it, yep. he's getting it well, and he's drawing the foul. What he's getting, Jim, he's getting the ball, but then the double team is coming so quickly that he will not have an opportunity to get off what he would like. Here comes Here's Okafer. Okafer, and that was the second on Justin Brown. Hayes with four, Okafer with three coming back in here. Now, Okafer will be a lot better off now because he won't have that singular responsibility to handle Baxter. And Ryan Randall will come in for the shooter. Baxter to the bench to, for a breather. And he needs a rest, and Jim Calhoun again with some wise use of that bench over there, getting minutes from big men, minutes and fouls. Our 15th tie of the game. Gordon Okafer thought about it. Nice. Back out. Nice help by Dixon. Gordon on the drive. Puts it up left hand. Tipped out to Nicholas. Dixon's on a wing. They go middle instead. Wilcox and Maryland's back in front. Boy, he can run that floor for a big man. Breaks an even five minute field goal drought for the Terrapins. I think if you're Connecticut, you want that ball in Butler's hands as much as possible. To clear it out a little bit here. Everybody else a little too anxious to shoot. Selby hacked on the way up. But now Maryland able to use a foul on Randall. Nice pass that time, and here is impossible to stop Wilcox the way he can elevate. We saw earlier in this ball game when he went up above Okafor, you can see the eyes almost the level of the rim. Randall's second, Selvi at the line, and the only scholarship senior for the Huskies with two. Two to tie. I think a great story about Johnny Selvi showing his leadership this year and that loss that Connecticut had to St. Bonnie's. And he got everybody in the locker room and said, I want to apologize for my selfish play in this game. Guys, we've got to pull together if we're going to win. And those are the kind of things that senior leadership brings for good teams. Tried to pull them together, and he has now pulled them even for the 16th time in this game. An adjustment by Connecticut. Maryland is going to have to adjust likewise. Wilcox up and over. Randall put back. And Selby. Oh, that's Gordon. Gordon. Gordon coming out. Huskies with the numbers. Flip to Butler. Oh, big collision. It's going against Maryland. It's going against Randall. It's third. And there is Butler as we've talked about the versatility of his game can take it to the hole as a finisher shoot the shot on the outside and there was Maryland not putting away Jim the thing that we thought they'd have a big advantage and that would be offensive rebounding Baxter and Blake are about to come back into the Terrapin lineup Blake was out briefly with three fouls. And Butler and 78 percent free throw shooter this year you go all the way across the board. He had 97 assists this year. We're talking about a guy that's been a finisher. Solid foul shooter. Shot over 50% from the, right at 50% from the floor. 39% from three. 70 steals. I mean, you talk about a guy that's a player of the year, All-American, without question. This guy belongs there. That's 15 in this half. 21 for the game. 62 of 63 games he's played for Connecticut. He's been in double figures. Including now 49 straight. Second longest streak. In college basketball to Juan Dixon. Oh, nice fake. And here he is with the jumper for two more to tie it at 60. Well, Robertson really got faked out of that. He assumed with the solid screen coming that Dixon was going to go over to his right. Maryland might need to think about going to Dixon a little bit. They've been going so much inside. They've gotten away from a, a game with any versatility. Butler trying to post up Mouton. 
with Leek Brown is on the bench. Gordon. Gordon thinks he can take him. Blake anytime he wants to off the dribble. Plus Blake has the three. Fake outside and inside with the rebound. It's Butler blocked by Wilcox. This could be his fourth. Now Butler is just so active inside. It is the fourth on Wilcox. He had excellent inside position here because he fought for it. You see, he was not in, in the best position to get this rebound when the shot was missed, but he got himself there and then went for the putback. And here he is on that foul line where he has really been solid. Wilcox out with four. Taj Holden to the floor for the Terrapins. 62-60, University of Connecticut in front. The other thing that's happening is Okafor able to play some minutes here without picking up another foul. You called for Dixon Billy. Here he is driving in to tie it at 62. And despite his frame, used his shoulder that time, his left shoulder, to clear a little space. I think this is a good move by Maryland not to get so occupied with Baxter inside. That's a charge. A little bit of a flop that time by Holden. Here we see Dixon. Watch him use his shoulder, his left shoulder right here, to go in and then pull back for the shot. Selby, without question, and Holden made good solid position and then did the flop. Talik Brown is back in for the Huskies. Good defender. Three straight trips. Dixon, not this time. Oka for clears. And no offensive rebounds for Maryland. Bounce pass to Gordon. And he is fouled by Dixon. Three on Dixon. Jim, there's uh, Indiana, a five seed. Remember the first day of this tournament? Only one five survived. So that was Indiana, and they've worked their way all the way to the final four. All the other fives were knocked off in round one. And I think of how many experts, when they were looking at the brackets after they first came out, trying to pick a first round low seed, everybody was saying Utah over Indiana. Holden, wow, what a the defender. And remember who beat Indiana in the first round last year? Kent. Kent State. Final 18 this year. What a great run by the Golden Flashes. Maryland by one. Both teams now starting to go to their strengths. Gordon very active now. Pass inside. Okafor wasn't ready for it. Well, he thought he, it was touched. But he tried to do a little bit too much there. He's got to remember the star player is, is not... Okafor, the star player is Butler. That was some catch by Holden in traffic, wasn't it? He was led just right, too. It's like hitting the receiver, like a Boomer Esiason pass back there in the old Maryland days. Tough shot by Mouton. Again, no offensive rebounds for Maryland at all. And again, Yukon pushes it up the floor. Under nine minutes to play. And if people are wondering about Butler being tired, Final Okafor. For Okafor scores inside, and he's heading to the free throw line after his first points of the game. Butler played all 50 minutes against Pittsburgh this year, so he is a guy that has plenty of stamina. Good pass inside. Okafor does a smart thing, seeing Baxter right in his face, using that rim. Holden with his third. Show, 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 show. Air ball. Well, you know, we talk about his shot blocking all the time, but he had 19 big points against Arizona, so he, the young man can score as well. He had nine blocks in that game and three other games this year. He had eight blocks. Baxter plucks it out of the air, holding from the corner. Gets oh, fouled. he's going to shoot three. Selby says, I never touched him. Well, Holden flopped on Selby on the defensive end of the floor, and now he flops on Selby. And not to take anything away from that, that it wasn't a foul, but he flops on him in the offense as well and gets three. And again, it was Taj Holden who came up so big a, a year ago today in the West Final when he came off the bench with three threes. Look at the foul trouble mounting on each side. Wilcox with four on the Maryland side. Holden with that make ties it at 65. 
Stayed on that line a long time right here waiting for the official to toss. Very comfortable. You notice Jimmy has not moved his feet at all, although there's a lot going on. A lot of times you'd like to see a guy get reset. Those feet have not moved. They are planted. Yep, the body's moved a little bit. Yeah, he's twisted. He's waited, he's waited a long time without any movement of those feet. Feet are planted. Gets all three. He liked where they were planted. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Most guys like to back away from the line if they're held up for a while. Holden goes out, Nicholas in. Nobody on, nobody on Gordon. Full court pressure. Butler, the man of the hour, comes back to negate the press. Now you have Butler down playing in low, a small team on the floor. Jim Calhoun going from big to small. He's got his three guard lineup on the floor right now. Butler wanting it, but Okafer instead. Butler fighting for the rebound and might be Mouton over the back. They just cannot keep Butler off the offensive glass. Mouton with his second. Maryland with bigger players, but Connecticut getting second shots where Maryland basically, Jim, I can't remember many that they've had this entire game. Well, it's double bonus situation with 10 fouls and a half already on the Terrapins. Two shots for Karan Butler. A young man who really turned his life around, Billy. The age of 15. Drug and gun possession charges and spent some time in jail. He's been very open about it. Yep. Said it was a good thing for me. It turned me around. From seen Wisconsin and then uh, went up to Maine Central where they have done such a fine job with a lot of kids, not only basketball wise but academically to put them with an opportunity to play in Division One basketball. Dixon back out to Baxter on the floor. Huskies have Numbers. it. Gordon breaking. Tip back. Oka for the trailer and the lead. And a foul. And there was a case where Dixon got up in the air. Baxter out of position and Connecticut taking advantage of every Maryland mistake. Boy, Okafor just outran the pack. How about Gordon? He knew that he was in trouble and just did get that ball tipped over. Terrific job by Connecticut. Fourth foul on Holden. Okafor gets it this time after an air ball. He makes the three-point play. And with under eight minutes remaining, what a great one we have here. 19 times they've changed the lead. Back and forth we go. 744 remaining in this one. Butler with 24, Baxter 23 on the Maryland side. Dixon has tried to get a lot more active offensively. Set up for the three and the lead back to Maryland. Good job. Blake saw exactly what Dixon was trying to do, read it perfectly. 70 69, Terrapins. Double screen out front, trying to get Butler free. Okafer now wants it inside. Tough pass. Yep. Got to question that pass. With Wilcox in the game, you're not going to throw over him. The key for Maryland, Jim, are getting some second shots. Connecticut has been one and dunning this game. Selby reach around, knocked it out, Maryland ball. Nicholas's sneakers are untied right now. He asked the ref to, to give him some time, but there is no time, so he's running with an untied sneaker. Good screen. Looking for the Blake, tried to get it over Selby and Wilcox right there. Flat footed rebound. And no second chance points for Maryland. Baxter that time out of position. Over the back on Baxter that will send Butler to the line for two. For Baxter, his second. Excellent blocking out technique by Connecticut in this game, particularly stopping Maryland on the offensive boards. Reminds me a lot of the Michigan State teams, Jim, that we saw work their way to the Final Fours with just great blocking out. Not allowing any easy points. And that's what Gary Williams was talking about yesterday when we were talking about the history. Williams and Calhoun go way back when Gary was the coach at Boston College in 
not even 10 miles away at Northeastern was Jim Calhoun. And what an interesting situation here for Connecticut's athletic director, Lou Perkins. There he is. This is his birthday, but he's <laughs> feeling a little pressure. He hired Gary Williams of Maryland, formerly the AD at Maryland. He brought Gary Williams home. Now the UConn athletic director. There's screening down inside by Maryland. Selvies on Baxter. Wilcox steps in. Tough shot. Right over Oka for two. That was a tough shot. Gliding left. 13 for Wilcox. I think Another what, lead change, Billy. I think what Maryland was trying to do to test and see if they were still going to double inside on Baxter. And a steal by Wilcox. Telegraph pass by Gordon. Those are two big turnovers by Gordon trying to handle the ball. He's much better to be the recipient of passes. Blocked away. And here come the Huskies with a four on two. Brown, Butler, double punt. 23rd lead change. And Jeff Blake did not read the scouting report, Jim. When you think you're wide open against Okafer down in that lane, you have made a mistake. That's when he blocks his shots. 22 for Butler in this half, 28 for the game. Turnaround jump shot. Outside Nicholas, three instead. And again, good blocking out by Butler, keeping Baxter off the glass. Five minutes remaining in a thriller for the final berth at the final four. The one and two seeds in the East battling it out. To Lee Brown good for move. the drive and the three-point lead. Everybody today has played Brown to be the passer. He's been much more aggressive looking for a shot and it's paid off. Jim, here's what I was talking about with Blake. You've got to think of the scouting report. Okafor loves to, in effect, be away from the ball when he goes to block shots. And Blake goes in there thinking he's wide open and tastes it. You see a little panic offensively in Maryland right now. Baxter challenging Okafer and he draws his fourth. Okafer with a hand straight up, but again, that big chest of Baxter giving him all kinds of problems. You almost think that in this particular game, Okafer would be better matched up against Wilcox, where he wouldn't have that big body to have to go against. To Gary Williams in that timeout, say, let's go right in there and take it right to Okafer and get that fourth? Well, you can. We, yes, I mean, he certainly did. And you've got to see that Connecticut that time did double, not have the double team. So Jim Calhoun took it off. Wilcox out, Holden in. Gordon replaces Okafor. He'd like to go ahead and have Okafor still on this court for the last couple of minutes. Smaller lineup for the Huskies. It's worked effectively. That puts Butler down inside, and Maryland goes zone. Now, I don't know if that's a good move, because right now on the floor, Connecticut has its best shooting team. It's perimeter team. Yes, the perimeter team's on the floor. Gordon penetrates, gives up Butler. Oh, and a foul on Nicholas, who thought he had a clean block. Well, the official right under the basket never blew the whistle. This call is made from the outside. Let's see it. Looked like it was all all ball there. The official that made that call was not at all in a position to make it. Butler has been at the line already 12 times in this it, half. It's been like a career on that line, Jim. In this half. Made 10 out of 13. Here's our CBS Sports Line stat of the game as Wilcox returns. Field goal percentages. Look at the switch in the second half, Billy. Get complete tournament coverage at cbs.sportsline.com or America Online under the keyword CBS Sports Line. Well, we thought something had to change there. As I said, Connecticut number one in the Big East in regard to field goal shooting percentage on the offensive end, and also number one in the Big East field goal shooting percentage defense. That's hard to do, but that's why they were the champions.
30 for Butler. UConn leads 77-74. The same score they beat Duke for the championship and beat North Carolina State here in the second round of this year's tournament. Wilcox looking inside. Nothing there. Selby doing a great job on Baxter. For the tie, Dixon. What a shot. Juan Dixon. The one and only has tied it at 77. Jim with no dribble there being guarded by Talik Brown, who is an excellent defender. And Maryland does stay zoned. Jim Calhoun wanting the timeouts. Jim, let's watch the defense. Maryland decides to stay in the zone, even though Jim Calhoun did not substitute during that timeout and has his perimeter team on the floor. So he's got four guys that can go ahead and shoot beyond this zone. Brown actually shoots better, deeper. Robertson behind the back to free himself, rebound into the arms of Nicholas. Maryland with a chance to regain the lead. Now, with this small team there, there's going to be a matchup, and that's going to be Butler on Holden. Holding there on Brown with Dixon. It'll be a one and one. Taylor Brown has played a lot of minutes out here today. And Butler, of course, should be very fresh because he sat that long period of time where Maryland got a kind of a controlling lead in the first half. The last five minutes of the half. Dixon, an outstanding free throw shooter, his first attempt and hits the front end of the one and one for the lead. I'd say outstanding. 90%? Yep, 91%. Led the ACC in free throw shooting this year. Jim Calhoun, as we said, has his perimeter team on the floor. I think penetrations, kickouts to Butler or to Gordon are in order for Connecticut. Malik Brown on the kickout. He's got Robertson, Gordon, and Butler. All three of them excellent three-point shooters. But they've got to get penetration first. There's the outside shot. Better take it. Oh, what a play. Hurts. What a play by Robertson. All day. He started off with that great drive using that little half hook of his. 15 for Robertson. 79 all. Not supposed to make that play against the zone. Newton, they're trying to feed Baxter over Selby. Oh, what a shot. Great defensive play by Selby. Baxter just too big. Tremendous shot. Senior on senior, and Baxter gives Maryland the lead at 81-79. Maryland just picks up full court with no intention of keeping that pressure on, and they go back into their zone. This is the most zone I've seen the Maryland team play in quite some time. I guess Gary Williams feels he can't stop that dribble penetration. Butler trying to hide down on the baseline. To leak round jumper. Off the rim and Juan Dixon comes inside for the board. From the weak side, Dixon, despite that frame, goes in traffic. Another solid screen. Dixon back to Baxter. It's going to be before the shot. We're in a double bonus on each side. Baxter with two. Season high, 28 for the senior. Blake comes back. Robertson for UConn. For a two possession lead. 83-79, Maryland. Excellent follow-through by Baxter. Stayed right with the shot. And they stay in the zone. Connecticut's got to let Butler touch the ball on this sequence. There he is. Driving on Wilcox. Inside Okafer underneath. Well, Mouton likes the foul, but I think, Jim, he'd have been better off with Okafer down underneath the the backboard. I don't know if he could have got a shot off there. Good pass. Now watch how far underneath the basket. See, he has no angle for the shot. There was no need to try to foul. Mouton's third and Okafer. One of two at the line. 
with one wide miss. But a swish this time for the freshman. Blake back in for ball handling purposes. Selby replaces Gordon. But we have now both coaches going that offense to defensive shifting. Jim Calhoun has had two bitter disappointments, Jim, in a regional final. Remember the UCLA situation, but nothing like the Leitner and Duke situation. This is actually the anniversary date of that game 12 years ago today. This is the second. Baxter with the rebound. Three-point lead and possession for Maryland. But in any case, Connecticut will get the ball back no matter what happens here. Robertson staying right down on Blake. I think he thinks he may be able to pick one off. Robertson's getting confidence. Timeout, Maryland. Well, you know what Maryland's going to want to do. They're going to want to get the ball as quickly as possible into Dixon's hands. He's being guard by, guarded by Brown. Not a lot of time to set up the offense here. Wasted a lot of time. Seven on the shot clock. Blake fires three. Yes! Huge shot. Blake with the make, 86-80. His first points of the game, Robertson, front of the rim, rebound. Foul That's on Robertson, foul Blake's, on Robertson. Blake's going to go to the line. That was some huge shot. And, and why Connecticut allowed Blake to be wide open here, I don't know. Okafor's back. He knows he's not going to drive. What a huge shot. His dad, Richard, drives 1,100 miles a game to watch him at Maryland. He had to make an extra little <laughs> drive to come up here. Talk about the ultimate road to the Final Four. His father won't fly. That's His right. Family from well, down in Miami. He gets a break if it's in Atlanta. Two shots again, double bonus. And Blake had not scored the entire game until that three. Well, he said he played a bad game the other day against Kentucky, but that shot will make up for a lot in the minds of Steve Blake. It's a pair. And the final four is set, Jim. Final 14 seconds. And a thriller here in Syracuse. Oh, Butler with that a big Butler. time dunk with nine seconds. Jim, if you're Maryland, you would like to get the ball again in Dixon's hand, the best free throw shooter they've got on the floor. But the key thing here, obviously, is to get the ball inbounds. Maryland, Connecticut not guarding the inbound shooter. They get it there knowing they have to foul somebody as quickly as possible, and Dixon wisely gets the ball. One of the best free throw shooters in the land and clearly one of the best players, if not the best player of the year in college basketball. He was the ACC player of the year beating out Jason Williams of Duke but there are some who think he may win his conference player of the year but not the national well, player he of the year. won the conference player of the year a vote 41 votes for for Dixon 38 to, to Jason Williams and that will seal it Billy if Maryland can get to the championship game and win it a week from tomorrow night this is a program that has sought a national champion since basketball began at the school in 1923 April the 1st would be their 2002nd game, and they could be the 2002 national champions well, on that night. One thing is amazing. This is the first time Maryland has ever won an Eastern Regional. Is that amazing? Back-to-back -back years, the Maryland Terrapins are going to the Final Four.